The main source of information for farmers today is the agrochemical industry. So if you've got a problem and you ring up an agrochemical salesman, you know, he will have a solution in a can that will solve all your problems. You know, he's not going to tell you that actually if you grew a different variety you wouldn't have the problem in the first place or if you grew them a little bit further apart you wouldn't get a problem. He wouldn't make money out of that, he makes money by selling chemicals. Back in 1986 when I applied my first field of vegetables, I was kind of not utterly committed to organic. I just really didn't want to use those chemicals with skulls and crossbones on them. The first crop that I grew was leeks. They started developing these little um, red pustules like this one leek here has got a few on it. Uh, it's called rust puccinia. It's a disease that's spread by um, rain splash in warm weather and it just ripped through the field and by the end of October it looked like they were going to lose the crop. Made a few phone calls, you know, got the agrochemical salesman, told me, you know, what you need to do is just spray it with some fungicide and that'll clear it up, boy. Anyway, but I didn't, and in November it got cold and the um, leeks grew away from the rust and I ended up having a fantastic crop. When you're a farmer in your field, you know, out on your own and it's all going wrong, that little whisper in your ear that I've got the solution to all your problems in a chemical container is, is pretty um, persuasive. Um, and I'm very glad that I didn't listen to them. We have subsequently found out that there are varieties of leeks which have quite good resistance to rust. By growing those varieties and growing them just a little bit further apart, it really is not necessary to spray leeks with fungicides. I mean, today, I think it's about 75% of, of agrochemicals are sold by four global companies. And increasingly, actually, they have also bought up all the seed industry. So, you know, they control the supply of seeds and they supply, control the use of chemicals and they have been completely dictating the direction that agriculture has gone in, which is really more about their profits than it is about producing healthy food or maintaining farmers' incomes. I mean, I think greenhouses are a really interesting example of what can be done with an ecological, biological approach to pest control. I mean, when we put up our first tunnels 20 years ago to grow peppers and tomatoes and aubergines for our, our boxes, yeah, they were devastated by red spider mite and aphids. They just went in there and had a field day. And we were then advised to actually fumigate our greenhouses with some really, really toxic chemicals. At the time, we were assured by the government that these were safe chemicals to use. I mean, if they were safe then and they're not safe now, I mean, how are we supposed to believe the government when they tell us that it's safe to use neonicotinoids? I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure that they will be banned just like virtually all the chemicals that I used as a teenager have been banned. There is no safe level for a, a nervous system disrupting insecticide. There's no safe level for a hormone disrupting herbicide. I mean, not for a bee, you know, not for a leak and not for a human. We slowly found that by managing the habitat to encourage the predatory um, insects and indeed sometimes actually introducing predatory insects, that we could control all those pests. Interestingly, 20 years later, that's what everyone's doing because all the chemicals they were using, either the insects have acquired resistance because they breed really, really quickly inside a tunnel, or indeed they've been banned because they're not safe for use. So almost everyone is now using an ecological approach to insect control in greenhouses because they've had to. To arrive at a, a saner agricultural system, we really do need to invest in knowledge and we can't expect private enterprise to do this because it doesn't produce something that's saleable at the end of it. So we need agricultural colleges, you know, we need horticultural colleges, we need natural sciences that aren't funded by the agrochemical companies. Since the, I suppose, 70s, you know, the government has been gradually withdrawing anything that it regards as near market research. If you allow the industry to fund research, the industry will lead you towards things that it can make money out of. And that's what's happened in agriculture, you know, since the 60s.